Algae is one of the most diverse, adaptable, and ubiquitous life forms on the planet. More than just pond scum, it's a source of food and increasingly fuel. And at one algae farm, researchers are employing these tiny green plants to trace the origins of sex. We might call this story Fifty Shades of Green. Reporter Jim Kersher takes a look. When you come to see Jim Human's farm, you will not find him tending acres of crops. Instead, he brings you to a set of cabinets, albeit high-tech, expensive cabinets, with computers controlling the variables of light, heat, and atmosphere. This is one of our 12 growth chambers. This is Dr. Jim Human's experimental algae farm at the Danforth Plant Science Center in St. Louis. It's a pretty unexplored area. It was early in his career that he was drawn to unlocking the secrets of these tiny plants. But I saw that there's some interesting problems in biology that you could only approach using green algae. And I felt that green algae were really understudied and underexploited. These guys are so beautiful. While most of us know algae from bodies of water, from puddles to oceans, it's really long, long dead algae, not dinosaurs, that's been fueling our cars. Algae contain lipids, oil, and that's why some say it is the biofuel of the future, although they've been saying that for quite some time. Still, there are practical and potentially profitable reasons for working with algae. We can have at least 12 different experiments going on at the same time. But in the process of trying to determine which algae work best under what conditions, Human's research team found something that's created quite a buzz around one of the most intriguing questions about life on Earth. How sex has evolved. This is, a, this is a very broad evolutionary question. It's the birds and the bees, plants and animals and people. It's all around us, the workings of males and females. And it's been going on for maybe a billion years. So you don't find the answer to this evolution question by digging up bones. Because we became multicellular and plants became multicellular so very, very long ago. It happens to be that the group of algae that we're working with evolved multicellularity very recently in evolutionary time. You can see the evolutionary steps in different kinds of living related algae. Single cells that just split into two, a step up the ladder, algae with plus and minus mating types that merge and share genetic material, and multicellular algae with fully developed sexes, females producing eggs, males producing sperm. Uh, that looks like a female strain, that's a male strain. Human says it was assumed that key evolutionary step must have involved a lot of genes working in a lot of complex ways. But when they followed the sex trail, it led them to just one single gene. And that one gene which determines mating type in the single cell alga, where you can't tell the difference between, we call them plus and minus, that same gene controls being male or female in the multicellular alga. So we can literally trace a genetic lineage um, through this one gene. So this is sort of the origins of sex. The, the or, right, exactly, the origins of sex. And you can do a sex change operation on algae, is that correct? We, we, we can, actually. <laughs> we can take a, a genetically female alga, put a single gene in from the male, and now we have a, a modified alga that makes sperm that are actually functional. And we can take that same gene away from the male and now he'll start making eggs. Actually, these are girls. Now, this yeah. is great science on its own, but it does contribute to the work he's doing at the Danforth Center's Enterprise Institute for Renewable Fuels. Algae is still a potential fuel of the future. There are challenges in moving from demonstration projects to large-scale farms, perfecting the technology and making it economically viable in the marketplace. With, with Jim Human's work will continue to focus on the inner workings of the algae itself. His contribution to the understanding of the evolution of sex takes us back hundreds of millions of years. His real job is figuring out how he can put that knowledge to work. How can we turn them into a crop by developing breeding systems for them? How can we figure out what are the important genes that we might want to modify in algae in order to improve them as a biofuel feedstock? It took, you know, 9,000 years to domesticate maize, and we want to do the same thing for algae in you know, a dozen years or less.